Hello Church! This is Thomas DeWall and I'm here to read the day 31 in uh, Pastor Mike's book Stepping Forward on uh, Ephesians. And this one is entitled Some Results of Surrender. And it's Ephesians 5, 19-21. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even to the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Uh, the the uh, camera's moving around a lot because my cat is uh, jumping around on her cat tree where I have my computer. It's the only thing high enough. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the insights that Pastor Mike brings out. As the Christian presses on and surrenders to Christ Jesus, there will be at least four results or consequences of this surrender. Of course, there are more, as seen yesterday, However, the Apostle makes mention of four specific results here, which we will discuss today. The Spirit-filled Christian, that is, the one yielding to the Holy Spirit, will produce these results. The first result is found in the beginning of verse 19. Have you ever seen an angry person singing joyfully to God? It probably doesn't happen too often, if at all. The angry person may mouth the words, but there isn't any real joy coming from the heart. Likewise, an individual who does not surrender to Christ will not have much joy in the heart when speaking to other believers. But the spirit-filled Christian will speak to others with the joy of singing to God. The second result is found in the latter verse of in the latter half of verse 19. How we communicate to our Lord will provide whether will prove whether or not we are allowing the Holy Spirit to fill us. If we speak to him in a derogatory manner or with anger, we can be sure that surrender is lacking. However, if our heart is filled with singing and delight as we approach our Lord, then we know that we are surrendered to him. When there is influence and control by the Holy Spirit, there will be an appreciation and happiness in our heart as we come into the presence of Jesus. The third result is seen in verse 20. When the believer can sincerely thank God for all things, no matter what the situation, that is clear evidence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. This is not a pseudo joy that a person tries to muster up to convince the mind everything is all right. Rather, it is a confidence in the sovereignty of God, in the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. It is a thankfulness in the mighty plan and work of the Father in heaven. It is the complete and clear assurance that what has happened was first filtered through God himself. And the fourth result of surrender is described in verse 21. When a child of God would rather serve his brother or sister within the family of God than exalt himself, that is evidence the person is filled with the Holy Spirit. When we use our divine gifts to encourage, equip, and build up the body of Christ, we are in a state of surrendering to Christ and accordingly do His will. A Spirit-filled Christian will not applaud himself, but rather the family member next to him. The Spirit-filled Christian would rather lift his brother or sister up then place himself on a pedestal to receive the praises of people. Here's the challenge. To have the results of the Spirit-filled life, there must be a total surrender to Jesus Christ. We must be careful not to try to make these results 
appear by our own power, they will naturally come when there is influence and control by the Holy Spirit. To force these results would be doing a work that is unprofitable to anyone. They simply cannot be manufactured by us. They must be a product of the Holy Spirit. So where do you stand today? Do you see the results of a Spirit-filled life being displayed through you? If you don't, please don't try to create them or force them. You must surrender your life to Jesus Christ. This is a daily act that should characterize every Christian. The more we surrender, the greater and more obvious the results. Good word. I've jotted down a few notes and uh, I have a lot of scripture to look at, but I'll try to keep it short. And, you know, of course, my hope is that in sharing the word and some thoughts, the Spirit will speak to you and help you to walk even more closely with Him. So the first uh, statement that I wanted to talk about is the Spirit of Jesus is our joy. Pastor Mike says, an individual who does not surrender to Christ will not have much joy in the heart. And that is definitely true. I want to uh, refer you to James chapter 1, verse 22. And uh, what I like to do with Scripture is, if I can say it about myself, it helps me to internalize it more. So this is just a little bit of a, uh, this is from James chapter 1, verse 22. But it says this, I am a doer of the word of God and am blessed in my deeds. I am happy in those things which I do because I am a doer of the word of God. When we do what Christ in us is leading us in, there is automatic joy. You've seen it in people around you who are serving. You, you look at their lives, and when, they're, when they are serving to help the church, to help people, you see the joy on their face. And if, and if joy is lacking in your life, or you just want more joy, ask God. Better yet, just step out and do something. Help in the children's church. Help uh, visit somebody that you, that you know would love to hear, to have a visit from you. And your joy will increase when you take your mind off yourself and put it on others. Psalms 37 verse 4 says, and I'm internalizing this, I delight myself in the Lord. And Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 the joy of the Lord is my strength. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is the strength of my life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. Now, if you'll would like to turn to me, I'd like to look at John chapter 15, and I'm going to start in verse 3, and then we'll jump up to verses 7 through 11. 
And I like to read more or less in the context. That's why I'm putting uh, 7 through 11 in here. So John chapter 15 and verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. Now remember what Pastor Mike said? We can't do this ourselves. If we try to do this ourselves, it's a failure. But when we abide in Jesus, his joy becomes ours and fruit is produced. You know, you don't, you can't even imagine that an apple tree would be thinking, oh, I've got to produce more apples. I've got to produce more apples. No, it just abides and apples are the fruit so let's go on to uh, the second portion that uh, pastor Mike was referring to uh, the second result Um, where there is influence and control by the Holy Spirit there will be an appreciation and happiness in our heart as we come into the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, he he refers to anger here before. And a person who is, let's just say, habitually angry, they are not able to habitually experience joy because there's always something wrong. But when we are surrendered to Jesus, surrendered to his ways, joy is just a natural byproduct. It's just natural fruit. Now, I want to just say one thing about anger. You know, there have been times, in fact, there was probably a decade, when I was angry with God. I didn't like the way things had turned out in my life. And you know, during that decade, I was not surrendered. I mean, yeah, I went to church, but I was not surrendered. So I encourage you, if you are angry with God, he's big enough, he can take it, tell him. But at the same time as you're telling him that you're angry and shouting and whatever, know and and really get it into your imagination that God is God of the universe He's big enough to to accept your anger. He's big enough for you to let it out. But then when you're done, go to his word. Go to Psalms 100. Go to Psalms 103. Go to Psalms 139. And after you've expressed your anger to God, read those Psalms aloud to God in the same way that you were expressing your anger before. He's big enough and he will inhabit your heart and give you more assurance. Um, The important thing to know is God is on our side. God is in us now. And who can stand against us? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 
Let's turn over to Romans chapter 6, verses 20 through 23. I know this is a little bit longer than probably what you're used to here, but it really is important on, on these subjects. Now, something that the Holy Spirit has taught me is that when you see the word sin, it is equal to the word self. So if you follow this reading with me, I'm going to substitute the word sin for self. So starting in verse 20 and going through 23. For when you were slaves of self, you were free in regard to righteousness. Therefore, what benefit were you then deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the outcome of those things, self, is death. But now having been freed from self and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification. That's being set apart for God, resulting in sanctification and the outcome, eternal life. For the wages of self is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's good news, don't you think? We can be free. We are free from self. Now, to go on to the third uh, result of being surrendered to Christ. Pastor says, when the believer can sincerely thank God for all things, no matter what the situation, that is clear evidence of the filling of the Holy Spirit. It's not a pseudo joy that a person tries to muster up, but it is confidence in the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. A complete and clear assurance that what has happened has first been filtered through God himself. Now I want to take you to Psalms 100. And this is just so sweet and so powerful and so loving. And it really does help to get our minds adjusted to reality. The reality of God. Psalms 100. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. And his faithfulness to all generations. On top of this, let's go over to Psalms 139. And we'll read just a couple of portions of this. Psalms 139, beginning in verses 1 through 7. Now, I hope that as you're listening to this, you're writing these scriptures down so that you can go back and see the truth of what, what God says about you and has for you and who He is. O oh Lord, You have searched me 
and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thoughts from afar. Remember about being angry and, and telling God of your anger? He understands your thoughts. You scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Now let's skip down to verses 16 through 18. These are some familiar passages. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And this is key. And in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. Everything in your life comes through the filter of Jesus Christ. Now you may ask, God, why are you doing this to me? But that, again, if you're asking that, you're focusing on self. When I'm asking that, I'm focusing on self. I've learned not to ask that anymore. But uh, when we focus on the God of the universe, and when we understand that our life on this planet Earth, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, 120 if you're strong, um, it's a drop in an ocean of eternity. Brothers and sisters, when we leave this planet, and we all will, we'll be looking back at it and saying, praise God, you brought me through. And then for the rest of eternity, a whole ocean filled with drops of water. We will be experiencing and learning more of the goodness and the love of God in Christ Jesus. And you know, if you if you want a good uh, resource on what others across the world have experienced for the name of Jesus. I got this book, it's called Hearts of Fire, and uh, you know, I guess it's, you might be seeing it in reverse, uh, like in a mirror. I don't know how to fix that on my computer, but it's called House of Fire, and it's from um, The Voice of the Martyrs. It was sent to me free, and I don't, I don't remember asking for it. I've, I've been on their mailing list, but I would imagine you could send to Voice of the Martyrs, go online, and they would probably send you a free copy of this book. Or you could borrow this one. I'd be glad to loan it out to anybody. But it's eight women in the underground church and their stories of costly faith. Now, I can guarantee that whatever you have gone through is nothing compared to the torture and the hardships that these have gone through. And yet each one of them shined a light in the darkness. The light of Jesus was living inside of them and through their torture, he was always there. That is our God. 
So for uh, result number four, let's go. When we use our divine gifts to encourage, equip, and build up the body of Christ, we are in a state of surrendering to Christ and accordingly doing His will. I'd like to uh, turn over to uh, Ephesians for this part. Ephesians, we'll start with chapter 4 and verse verses 1 through 7. Give me a moment here where I can find this. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> and Paul is saying here, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to persevere the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now the all here is the body of Christ. But to each one of us, Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. <clears throat> and then let's jump on down to verses 11 through 16. And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. This is the key thing. For the equipping of the saints for the work of service to building up the body of Christ. That's what Pastor Mike and Pastor Brian and the elders and the deacons are all here for. So that we, the body of Christ, would be built up until we attain to the unity of the faith. As a result... We are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by crafty, craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects unto him who is the head, even Christ. Oh, one more. From whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Let's move on to the challenge. To have the results of a spirit-filled life, there must be a total surrender to Jesus Christ. The gifts of the Spirit will naturally come when there is influence and control by the Holy Spirit. These simply cannot be manufactured by us. They must be a product of the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's a natural thing. When we abide in Him, He abides in us. You must surrender your life 
to Jesus Christ. And that's not a one-time thing. That's every day. That's every hour. Believe me, I know how hard it is, and I fail miserably <laughs> often in those hours during the day. But I keep on abiding. The more, because I know that the more I surrender, the greater and more obvious are going to be the results. I've got a few more scriptures to share. And I want to start with uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Now I know this is uh, quite a bit longer than what you're probably used to. And, um, well, we'll just see if it works. <laughs> Romans chapter 3, oh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Okay, here's where the rubber meets the road. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. My brothers and sisters, we are dead to self. That's what it says right here. We are dead to self. It means we are dead to sin. Sin is self. But we are raised to new life in Jesus. If we have become, this is verse 5, for if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him. In order that our body of sin, our body of self, might be done away with. So that we would no longer be slaves to self. For he who has died is free from self. Now, if we have died with him, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer has any mastery over him. For the death that he died, to he died to sin. He died to self once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Remember, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. He died to self at that moment. Proverbs 4 Verses 21 and 22. Let's go to that really quick. Proverbs, right after Psalms. Chapter 4, verses 21, 22. Like I say, I hope you're writing these scriptures down. Well, this is another one that I like to internalize. I like to make it my own. I will not let the word of God depart from before my eyes. For it is life to me, and it is healing to all my flesh. 
He says here, verse 20, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their body. <clears throat> so let's uh, go back to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10 and also put a finger in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. How about I go to Ephesians first since it's earlier. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Pages on my Bible are stuck together. <clears throat> oh, this is good. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has before has prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. I turn that to myself. I am God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works which God has prepared beforehand so that I could walk in them. And then let's go to Colossians chapter 2. In verse 10, in him you have been made complete, and he is the head over all rule and authority. In him I am complete. <clears throat> and because he is the head over all rule and authority, and Paul says that I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me, then uh, in the spiritual realm, he is the head and I am his body, ruling over all rule and authority. I am over all rule and authority. Um, I'm going to leave that at that. We'll go to uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. This is, this is the last uh, scripture. And this is key. This is everything. Um... Put on the new self, who is being renewed to renew to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. I take off the old self, and I put on the new self. I take off that old self, which is sin. I take off that old self of, uh, of self. And I take on the new self, which is created in the likeness of Jesus Christ. And that is what I choose to live in. And by God's grace, I will live in that 24 hours a day. And brothers and sisters, I pray that you will become so in love with the Lord Jesus Christ that you will be able to see the ugliness and put off that old self and see the joy and the peace and the love of Christ in your new self. God bless you. This has been a joy for me. Thank you.